Welcome back. So I see that the scan has finished processing. So let's go ahead and open it up. So we just have to click on it to open it. And you're presented with quite a bit of data, as you can see. Um, the first uh, two columns as, is the UPC and cost information that came from that file. And everything to the right of it is the Amazon data that we're pulling in, uh, minus the two custom columns that remember the item number and case pack that I, I, I chose during the upload. That will be all the way on the right hand side. So um, the first thing I recommend for people to do is to filter their scans. So let's go over the filtering process. There's two main ways to do it. There's either you can click these little menu icons and apply a filter individually to, uh, for each um, column, or the method I suggest is by clicking the filter button and getting access to the filter side nav. And that allows you to apply filters to many uh, columns uh, without having to click through each one. So, um, we can talk about presets uh, later on, maybe in a new video, I'm not sure. Um, but uh, a preset will allow you to load in a preset um, grouping or combination of filters so that you don't have to do this every time. But a basic uh, filter that I would suggest is first off sales rank. Everybody knows how important sales rank is. That's the number that's going to tell you how well it's selling on Amazon. Um, so if something has a high profit, it doesn't really matter if it doesn't really sell very well on Amazon. So the first thing we want to say is that, um, that the sales rank is less than, let's just put 200,000. And we also want to say that it is uh, greater than zero because we don't want to see any uh, sales ranks that are equal to zero. So that's good. And another thing I like to filter on now is the profit side. Um, so I want to see ROI that's greater than, we'll say 10%. And I also want to see profit that is greater than, let's say $1. And I know that these items are a little bit not, they're not expensive. All of these items should be less than $100 retail. Um, so it, for a $1 profit, it's actually a reasonable amount to put. Um, while we're here, I also like to hide some columns that I'm not necessarily worried about this time around. And the way you do that is by clicking the uh, little eye icons next to columns that you're not so concerned about. So I'm going to hide the size, color, and variation parent. Um, and let's see, anything else? I'll keep the rest. Um, something that's new in version two is the ability to um, sort columns. So for example, let's not, not necessarily, sorry, not sort columns, but order the columns. So let's say I want to have the, the brand right next to cost. I'll use click and drag and that'll reorder these columns in the order that makes the most sense to you. Um, so for example, I like to have item number way up towards the top next to cost. And that just helps me with the ordering and why not? Let's, let's bring up case pack while we're at it. Um, right next to item number. And then when you're done, you can either you can create a preset from this or you can just load make uh, let's apply the filter now and a little process and here we are with the end results um, by default it will sort by sales rank from the, the smallest sales rank to the greatest which is ideal because the lower the sales rank the more sales there will be so let's start to go through it and see if we find any winners. So since we already kind of did all of the sales rank filtering, 
Uh, I'm gonna scroll over to the side and see what the net profit and ROIs are looking like. It does meet our criteria. I do like that it's over a $2 net profit. So this would definitely be something worth considering. Uh, a new uh, feature in Scan Unlimited is the ability to see uh, Keepa charts within the app and not just within the app, but also within the scan. So you don't have to necessarily open the product detail feature, which I will be showing you soon. Um, but to see a chart, all you do is hover over the little graph icon and you'll see the 30 day keep a chart in the bottom right. So that makes it very convenient for you to quickly look at the keep a chart and make a decision on whether you should source an item or not. Um, if you need more information, there's a whole bunch of data that you can get from accessing the product detail uh, feature, which is accessed by clicking this little launch icon. So let's go ahead and launch the product detail feature. And this is going to give us much more data than, it, than there was in the scan row. So for example, we can see the category tree. So like it starts with toys and games, but it goes down to dress up play, etc. We can see the buy box price, the last time the price was changed. We can also see sales rank uh, averages and uh, over a period of time. So instead of just looking at today's sales rank of 637, which might be doing better because it's Christmas or it's not Christmas, but uh, it might be doing better because the holidays is coming up and it is a toy item. So that, that could be one reason. And you can kind of figure that out by looking at the averages. Um, keep the charts back again, uh, 30, 90 and 365 day charts. Um, and for those that are curious, if you do not have a keep a subscription, um, that is actually okay. Uh, if you're just a free, Scan Unlimited user, you will see the Amazon and new marketplace price uh, on the chart. If you are unlimited or you're on the two day plan, uh, you will also see the sales rank data. So even if you don't have a keep a subscription, you can still see the sales rank uh, history, which is another nice feature of uh, paying for one of the plans. On the right hand side of the the keep a chart, we have the offers, which shows all of the offers that are on that listing, including the seller's name, feedback and rating, and, uh, and also their stock information if we are able to gather that information. Uh, down here, we have the ROI profit calculator. What it allows you to do is go through a few scenarios of kind of what if this happens, what if that happens. So right now, just based on the data that's currently available, the, the profit is $2.53 with an ROI of 10.12%. Um, and we can look at this keep a chart and kind of see like, okay, well, it does look like the price doesn't necessarily stay at the $41 mark all the time. Let's kind of zoom out a bit to 90 days and see if it's true for the 90 day period. Actually, it does kind of stay at 41 pretty often. It was just this uh, short period of time where I guess maybe Amazon was trying to liquidate their product or their inventory for the item. Um, but overall, it's pretty um, pretty up there at $41. But let's just say that we kind of look at this price right here and we see, okay, well, it kind of got down to like $37 at one point. So what you can do is you can just change this to the price that you would like to see what would happen at. Um, and we can see that at $37, the ROI is negative and so is the profit, but it's not incredibly negative. So we know like over the past 90 days, the worst case scenario is we would take a loss of 129. Of course, I would not suggest setting your pricing so that you would make a loss. If you're using a repricer, definitely want to make sure that your minimum price is not at 37 for this item. We want to make sure that it's above uh, break even. So, and you can also do it for, of course, the other way. So let's say $43, uh, instead of making 10% ROI, we would be making 15%. Uh, 
there's two other fields that you can edit where you can edit the shipping cost, which uh, I didn't go over this yet, but um, we can quickly, well, I guess towards the end, maybe I can show you guys um, about shipping costs, but there's a global setting in your settings for Scan Unlimited that allows you to put a price per pound and um, all your scans will calculate based on this uh, global setting. So I think I have it set to 50 cents per pound. So, or that wouldn't make sense. I guess it was closer to 25 cents per pound because the product weight is 4.8, um, actually a little less, maybe 20 cents per pound. And so these two fields can actually be edited here as well. So let's say for example, you knew that you were going to get like a 10% discount on the product cost then you can say, oh, well, I know that actually instead of $24.99, it would be closer to $22.99 and my profit and ROI is now changed. Or maybe you might want to increase your cost because uh, your, your shipping cost because you know that it's going to cost more for shipping for some reason. So you can also change that as well. Um, and the last thing in the product detail is the variations component. Uh, which in this case is just, there's only one variation on this product, so that's very simple. But if there was multiple variations on this product, this would allow you to see all of the different options. So sometimes certain variations are better than others, and we have the sales rank per variation on there if it is available, because sometimes the variation is tied to the parent. So, um, but if it is available, we do show the sales rank of the child ASINs. When you want to go back to the scan, all you have to do is scroll up to the top and press back to scan, and that'll take you exactly where you left off from this view. So our filters are still applied. We are actually scrolled to the exact position that we were, so you do not have to worry about losing your space if you jump over to the product detail. Just make sure not to press the back um, on your browser, but rather the back to scan button, because then it'll take you right back. Um, so let's say that we were planning to source this item. Let's actually jump right back to the product detail because we need to figure out how many we want to buy um, because it is meeting my criteria. Now, one thing is in the offers tab, I see that Amazon's on there. Right off the bat, I already um, don't buy more than 10% of what I expect the monthly sales to be, because even if I'm trying to compete against Amazon, I might get the buyer box maybe 10% of the time. So um, that is something maybe you might wanna look into as well. So um, one question is how many sales per month is this selling at? So right now, Scan Unlimited does not provide this information. And the reason we do not provide this information is because we've always tried to stay away from estimated information um, because that can uh, be a little touchy. So uh, maybe one day we will add estimated sales into Scan Unlimited whenever we feel comfortable enough that the data is uh, pretty accurate. For now, I suggest uh, if you have no idea what sales per month would look like for a category um, based on a sales rank, then I suggest using a free estimator. I do not recommend necessarily paying for one because they're all pretty inaccurate, to be honest. So I don't know if it'd be worth paying for one, but if I, uh, one, one sales estimator that I recommend is that Jungle Scout has a free sales estimator on their website and it's very simple you just type in the rank so if we go back to scan unlimited the rank was three or 637 i might actually take the 30 day average and say 935 just to get a little bit uh, this way it's not just like right now but rather what the sales are like for the whole month um so 935 and let's choose the marketplace the united states and the product category, which is toys and games. I believe so, right? Yes, toys and games right here at the top. And then you say calculate sales, and it gives you a very, very rough estimate of what the detail page will, uh, will sell through. Uh, so meaning not what you will sell, but 
the whole listing as a whole, what, what, what are the sales like for the whole listing? Hopefully that makes sense. So it's about, we'll just say 3000. Um, but like I said, with Amazon on the listing, I'm already only looking at about 10% of that. And then what I also recommend doing is kind of looking at the competitive offers. In this case, I would say that Cozy Gifts, EKN, Amazon, of course, and Ambus Enterprises are all competitive. And I say that because they're all the same price. Oh, not Ambus actually, because they are merchant fulfilled, um, which is not going to get the buy box as often as an FBA offer. So really it's three uh, competitive offers, but also including Amazon. So like I said, uh, I'm already at 10% of the monthly sales, and then I'm going to divide that by the amount of competitive offers. So in this case, I would be the fourth person entering, and so I would probably divide this the 300 by three or four. So just to make it a nice even number, I'll say three. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Um, and do you know what I mean? Like this is not necessarily like what you should do it's just my recommendation and what i do uh, for trying to figure out how much to buy so now that um, i know how many i want i want 100 this will last me about a month hopefully and um, let's put this into our purchase order so i'm gonna go back to scan because i'm gonna need some of this information and i um downloaded a free purchase order template for Excel. And uh, so there's no real need to get like any kind of fancy software to make purchase orders. You can make them in Excel fairly easy. And um, I'm going to go ahead and add the first item in. So the item number, if I go back to scan unlimited, that was one of our custom columns. So I'm going to copy that, put it into the item number column. And then a description, there's no need for that. Uh, quantity, I said we're going to order 100, and the unit price, which is our cost, is $24.99. If you are getting a discount, I suggest that's where you would put it. You would you would discount it right there. But uh, in this case, I'm just going to say that I'm buying it at the wholesale price. Um, so right off the bat, we are at $2,500. Still pretty small purchase order, so let's keep going. Um, I'm actually going to cut here because I'm seeing that the video is starting to get a little uh, pretty long. Um, in the next part, we will continue trying to find new items to add to the purchase order. And hopefully we can get this purchase order to be over uh, $10,000 um, just so that we can see uh, a good amount of examples of items that would be worth purchasing. So see you in the next video.